All right, so now let's calculate the actual member forces in this truss. Um, now we're going to use a method of joints, which means we're going to look at each joint individually and sum the forces on that joint and hopefully set up a, several, a series of equations that allow us to solve for um, the force BC, force um, BA, sorry, this is point A, force BA, and force AC. Um, so let's look at this, and let's look at joint B. Now we have RFBY pushing upwards, RF. B Y. We have a value for that of 225 pounds. 225 pounds. We have F B C um, connected this way. Now I'm going to assume that it's actually pulling on this joint, uh, which would mean the member is actually in tension if it's pulling on the joint. So that's force. I'll call that B C, right? And this is going to be force B A. Now, I assume tension because if I'm wrong and it actually comes out to be negative, that just means it's in compression. So I can just, I always tend to assume it's pulling outwards, um, set up my equations accordingly, and the math will tell me whether or not if it's positive, it's in tension. If it's negative, it'll be in compression, which means it would have been actually the other direction. Um, all right, so again, this joint is not moving, which means the sum of the forces in the x and the y have to be equal to zero. Um, but we take a look, we have a force at an angle. We don't like forces at angles. We want to deal with forces that are vertical and horizontal. So we need to break FBA into components. So if we're going to do that, and that's FBA um, along, be along this direction right here, uh, we don't know this angle right off the top, right off the bat. But we know the whole truss is nine feet high, so this distance is nine feet. We know that this distance is 12 feet and this is actually perpendicular, this is the measured perpendicular distance um, to point A. So 9 feet, 12 feet, if you actually use Pythagorean's theorems, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, you could find that this side is actually 15 feet. Or you could recognize that this 9, 12, 15 is actually a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Um, so, this side is 15 feet. Who cares? Why did we do that? Well, we want to find a component of FBA. So, FBA in the x direction is going to be the component along this direction of this. Well, if we're finding the x direction, we want to do FBA cosine of theta, right? So, because it's along the adjacent side of the angle here. So, that cosine of theta. And I don't need to work backwards to figure out what the angle is. I could, and plug that into my calculator, you could do that, but I could find out the cosine right from these right here. That's a cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, 12 over 15. The distances will work as well. It's all in the same proportion. So, 12 over 15, so force BA times 12 over 15, or that's about uh, 4 fifths, or 0 0.8 times FBA. Now that's FBA in the X direction. All right? And we can do the same thing for the Y direction. Why don't we do that now? Because we'll need it soon anyway. So FBA Y um, would be FBA sine theta. Again, let's look back at our triangle. Sine of this theta would be opposite over hypotenuse, or 9 feet over 15 feet. So FBA 9 over 15. Uh, which is actually three fifths, or is 0 0.6 times FBA, and that's FBA in the y direction. So um, I'm going to rewrite this free body diagram to break FBA into components. So again, I have RFBY, I have FBC, which is already horizontal, we don't need to break that into components, and we have FBAY and F, B, A, X. So now we have two forces in the X, two forces in the Y, and now we can apply our equilibrium equation over here. So let's give ourselves some room for that. Some of the forces in the X, for this case, have to equal zero. They always equal zero. Everything always equals zero because this thing is not moving. So if that's true, my F, B, C plus my F B A X 
has to equal zero. Now I don't know what either of these are yet. I can actually substitute a little bit since we found out FBA X is actually 0.8 FBA and we'll eventually have to find FBA so I'll go in and throw that in there but I don't know either of these so I can't really go any farther with that equation. That's okay because I'll start summing the forces in the Y. And the forces in the Y direction also have to equal zero. So RF BY uh, plus FBAY has to equal zero. Um, now I know RFBY, so FBAY, uh, we've calculated that over here, that's 0 0.6 times FBA. I'm going to take RFBY um, to the other side. Excuse me, if I'm taking to the other side, I need to throw a negative in there, RF. By. Um, so divide by 0 0.6, divide by 0 0.6, my FBA has to be equal to now negative RFBY. RFBY was 225 pounds. That was one of our reaction forces we found on the, on the flip side, on the opposite side here, when we're doing the reaction forces. Um, divide by 0 0.6, so RFBA, if I can grab my calculator, of course, I close it on my computer each time, knowing I'm going to need it again, but here we go, 225 divided by 0.6 gives us 375, um, and don't forget that negative sign in there. So I have negative 375 pounds is FBA, or um, FBA is 375 pounds of compression. All right, that's one of the things we need to find. So, if we know FBA, we can work back over here and plug that in for our equation over here. And let's throw that over to the other side. FBC is equal to negative 0.8 FBA, we subtracted it from both sides. So FBC is equal to negative 0.8 times um, FBA, which was negative 375, right? We have to plug in the negative value here because that mathematically was what represents compression. Um, when I'm reporting it, it's more um, convenient to say, well, it's 375 pounds of compression. That's what the negative means in this case. But if I want to plug it back in, I should keep the value of negative 375 so that all the math works out. I can't tell an equation, hey, this is in compression. I say that by adding the negative in there. So FBC is equal to point. 8 times 375, 300 pounds. Now the fact that this came out positive means we were correct in our original direction, assuming this was in tension. So we have FBC, we have FBA, and the next part we're going to do one more joint so that we can get FAC.